praises be unto thee, O Lord God. We bless and honor your holy name. Blessed be your holy name, O Lord God. We thank you, Jesus. Praises be unto thee, O Lord God. Brakasaya. Thank you, Jesus. We magnify you and give you thanks. Give you thanks, O Lord God. Thank you, O Lord God, that in these last days you are raising up a remnant to do your will. Thank you that you are calling many back home. Thank you, O Lord God, that you are re-strengthening us, reinvigorating us, redeeming us, refreshing us, resetting us, realigning us, O Lord God. Thank you, Father God. As it goes down for the world, that it will be going up for us. Thank you, O Lord God. We thank you. Thank you for keeping us in perfect peace in the midst of the greatest turmoil in planet Earth. Thank you for leading us and guiding us day in and day out. Help us to do your will day by day. Help us to get our daily bread every single day. Let us not go one day without a meal from heaven. Thank you, O Lord God, for touching us by our spirit, touching us by your spirit. Thank you. We bless and honor your holy and majestic name. Thank you, Father God. Thank you for what you have done for us and what you are doing for us. We bless and honor you for this. In Jesus' mighty name. Jesus' mighty name. Jesus' mighty name. The Bible says, what thou seest in a book, write. Holy Spirit gave me a word to give to the congregation and those that follow us when I get back. What thou seest, write. In Revelation 1.10, it says, it was the Lord's day. And I was worshiping in the spirit, and suddenly I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet blast. It said, write in a book everything you see. The Holy Spirit said, these are the days that if you don't write it down when you see it, you won't remember it when you need it. That's very, very important. I am blown away at the things that I have lost because I did not write them down when I heard it or when I saw it. Seeing is a version of hearing and hearing is a version of seeing. It's the reason why when you talk with someone, you don't quite catch what they're saying in the moment you understand it. You say, oh, I see what you're saying. And that's one of the roles of the Holy Spirit is to take the scriptures and turn them into pictures so that you can understand because, you know, you can doubt what you hear, but you can't doubt what you see. No man doubts what he sees. And, um, that's just something that he wants us to do. There, um, when I went over to Nigeria, you know, thank you for praying for us while we were there. I have to take, I have to be very careful with that trip now in regard to where where it's at now in the spirit, you know. Um, so, for some reason, the spirit world is put on notice when I go over there. When I was over there, I received a visitation from above and below. The visitation from below was the Lord... Uh, cracking my force field a little bit allowing an enemy to come in and touch me but it was for the purpose of not him touching me it was for the purpose of exposing him <laughs> that's so deep ah that was crazy okay and i'll share more about that probably next weekend or the weekend after that but i'm encouraging you to do something here online and that is start carrying a uh, something by which you can write notes that's one thing when you go over there. I mean, everybody is taking notes. Every It's not even necessary sometimes. They're just taking notes. They're taking notes. But you want to be able to take notes, and you want to be able to, in particular, um, write down certain things that the Holy Spirit will show you when a person is up here praying, a person is up here speaking. Speaking because there's something about, you know, one of the things is that we don't know ourselves correctly. And the Holy Spirit will give you an instruction and the reason why you won't understand the instruction is because you don't know yourself. And so it's very important for you to get some type of manual, some type of booklet. Some people do it on their phones. But, um, but there's something about 
writing something, it makes some type of print on your mind and your spirit, and it makes it difficult to forget. Because there have been things, we came back, and my wife brought something to my attention. And I was like, how did you remember that? You know, she said, when you said it, I wrote it down. I never wrote it down and would have forgotten it forever. But she wrote it down, and it was just important for me to remember that at that moment. Something I said back in, see, she even remembers the year. Something I said in the year 2000, and when I said it, she had enough sense to write it down. To me, it was insignificant at the time. I was just like, well, this is what this pastor just hired me. This is what he said to me. She wrote it down, and I forgot about it. She brought it to my attention, and, and it helped me understand some things. So there are some things the Holy I mean, What's very interesting is Jesus said, what did he say? He said, the Holy Spirit will bring all things to re your remembrance, whatsoever I told you. But what Jesus told you was written. Okay. And if you don't write it down, you may not ever remember it. You understand? That's very, very important. Not writing it down can also be a form of laziness. That's probably, if the requirement to get in heaven was to write everything down, I'd be the last one making it in. <laughs> I'm just being honest with you. But that's something that I vowed to get on top of. I was over there, and the Lord adjusted me. You know how sometimes athletes, after a, a long bout or an Olympic game or whatever, they'll go see a, chiro a chiropractor and get adjusted. And that's what the Holy Spirit did for me in one of the services. He adjusted me. I didn't know. It's like, you know, we, gotta be, we, gotta, we have to be um, okay with using terms that we think is occultic. Okay? To say that you're in divine alignment is not an occultic term. That's a kingdom term that the occult stole because the church is so low level. Nothing that the enemy uses, he created. He took it from God and named it correctly or renamed it. And then when you come back to take it back, they say, oh, you're trying to be occultic. No, there's, the scripture makes it clear about being in divine alignment. And so when the Lord adjusted me in my spirit, I mean, I could tell. I mean, I was crying and everything. I adjusted, and then when I came back, I could hear differently. It's like my hearing was off or my, my seeing was off, you know. And so it's just, so what's very interesting is that um, God picks and chooses the moments he will speak to you. So you must be ready at all times. You need to carry a notebook in your car, your glove compartment. You know, with me, typically, if you watch uh, Charlie Brown, you know Linus always had that blanket. Uh, that's with me and my iPad. You know, sometimes I go to my children's games and they might think, this guy think he deep all the time. No, I got it soon, just in case. But it's been amazing to me how uh, the Holy Spirit, he speaks to me. I went to get the kids some pizza the other day, a couple days ago, whenever it was. And, you know, I'm headed back to the house. And when I pulled into the intersection, the Holy Spirit speaks. And I was like, ooh, I don't have nothing to write. And I, I held that thing until I came home and ran in the house to write that down. And my wife, let me tell you something. My wife and I had a, I don't know if you remember this. My wife and I had a conversation in our bedroom years ago. And we were talking about something, about relationships. And as a result of that, an answer came out of my spirit that was for men. And when it came out of my mouth, we were both blown away because we had never heard anything like that before. It was an answer for mankind that I have not been able to recover since because I did not take the time to write it down. See, so... It's very important for you to do these things. When the Holy Spirit gives an instruction, you know, the thing that thou seest, right. Because the Lord is going to show us many things today. He's going to show you many things today. You know, we are living in a time where it is so foggy out here. Many a times the Holy Spirit, he may not be able to speak all the time. He might have to point. Okay. And so, I mean, my daughter asked me a question yesterday about something. And I was like, no, we don't have that. We don't have that. And then just like that, whoosh, the Holy Spirit showed me. He said, yes, you do. It's in, it's in the cabinet above the refrigerator. I was like, what? See, and so you really need to be in tune. And let me tell you something. I actually heard this on social media. You have to be very careful what you listen to. Because, see, you can spend time with God. 
You can spend time in worship. You can spend time in prayer. And then when you come out of that time, you then begin to feel your ears and your eyes full of the gunk that's in the world. And you say, I'm spending time with God. I'm spending time in the word. What's going on? Well, the problem is, is that you filled the tank full of water, but then for the other 80% of the day, you filled it full of mud. So God might have spoke, but it couldn't get through the mud. You understand what I'm saying? So when you're serious about God, you have to be very selective. I mean, I have to be honest with you. It's just like all of a sudden my wife and I just have very little interest in. Everything. She said everything. And then she, yeah, I mean, it's just like, um, you know, I mean, we came back from Nigeria and we, I don't know what day it was, and we were sitting there in front of the, you know, we like to get, we like to eat for it, get our meal, set it all up with TV trays, turn on the television and see if Osama bin Laden raised from the dead or something crazy happened. <clears throat> That's a joke. And we turned it on. I said to my wife, I said, is it me or are we being irritated? She said, I'm straight irritated. There are some things that are sins, and then there are some things that are just not heavenly. So I'm going to be honest with you. I love Family Feud. I mean, I typically like to sit down with a meal if I'm eating, turn on Family Feud, see who's going to win this money. There's absolutely nothing wrong with Family Feud, except for the individual that's creating the question that has a sexual perversion spirit. <laughs> Can't believe I just said that, but it's true. You watch Family Feud every day for the next week and ask yourself, why are 80% of the questions sexual? Because it's a pervert behind the scene creating questions. Okay? Everything is trying to pull you into some type of sexual vice. It's just all over. Okay? Nothing wrong with watching Family Feud. But yet, Family Feud might fill you full of the wrong type of stuff. The only way for you to hear from heaven clearly is to be full of heaven. Nothing else. Nothing. Okay, so be careful of that. You know, when we were over there, not, not the reason I'm sharing it, Oedipo shared something with us. And uh, when we first got over there, he asked to meet with us, which I thought was a little strange. It's the biggest conference on planet Earth. Why are you meeting with us before, normally after? But anyway, and um, we met with us, and one of the things that he shared with us, he said, the Holy Spirit, he said, I have been writing every day for 40 years. He said, every day. He said, I write something that the Holy Spirit shows me. It's called priming the pump. Okay, the more he shows you and the more you write, the more he'll show you. That, you know, if you have, you, you'll have more. But, but if you don't take correctly what we're giving you, even what you have, you'll lose. So I'll show you something. I'll speak to you something. And sometimes it'll just come in the form of a whisper or your mind to just get a deep moment or a thought and, and you write it down. And so the Holy Spirit says, okay, they're writing. Let's give them more. Next thing you know, you're writing everything down, all these secrets and all of these advancements and all of these things and visions. But if you don't write, then you say, the Holy Spirit doesn't speak. Maybe it's because we don't write. But he told me, he said, I've been writing for 40 years, and the Holy Spirit told me, he said, I want you to release 40 years of personal notes to the public. He said, so that nothing is lost. See, that's the type of men that I like, not men that are trying to pimp the gospel. Do you realize how much that man could charge for his personal notes? It's going to be 20 volumes. 20 volumes. They're going to release them online. Now, online in Nigeria is different than online in America, so I don't know when it's going to get here, but it'll get here. But I was able to get volume one and volume two in handbook, in handwritten form. And I opened up page one. I closed it. I said, Jesus, I just want to give my life to you one more time. I just want to thank you for saving my soul and redeeming me. And, and why am I here over here in this place? And you understand what I'm saying? What thou seest right. If you don't write it down when you see it, you may not remember it when you need it. Y'all got that? And then this is a word for the pastors that are following me. I had four pastors reach out to me while I was gone. I mean, this is just getting interesting. And let me just make sure I say this word to the pastors. Anything that comes out of my mouth, you are free to use free of charge. Jesus said, freely you have received, freely give. Why would I charge for information that's not mine? What do they call that with book writing? Yeah, yeah, plagiarism, copywriting, infringement. <laughs> Synonyms are flying now. You understand what I'm saying? So for the pastors to listen to me, I was, I was kind of surprised over the last few months about pastors were kind of like, are you okay with me using, using what? The Holy Spirit's information? 
You know what's so interesting? I'll say this last point. I'm amazed at how the king of the universe dies for you. The king of the universe goes to hell for you. The king of the universe is building a mansion for you. The king of the universe says he has to share his inheritance with you. The king of the universe then gives you his name. The king of the universe then gives you authority. The king of the universe then gives you an entire book to walk in victory, which is himself pressed down to paper. The king of the universe then gives you a bodyguard. He then changes your name from human to son of God, to king, to lord, to more than conqueror, to ambassador, to salt, to light. You understand all of that? And then didn't charge you a dime. And then here I come and I preach a message. Uh, well, we'll give it to you if, if you if five dollars. You understand what I'm saying? So churches that do that, you know, they kind of be just sat on the side a little bit. I can't use you because you're not doing it the way Jesus would do it. If anybody had a right to charge, it would be Jesus. And he said, I didn't even come to serve. He said, now, this is a king who said, I did not come to be served as a king. He said, I came to give up my life. This is the situation. This is the time frame in planet Earth where we give it up. Eternity is when you gain it. But everyone is trying to gain it and don't know that they're giving it up. Ooh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lift your hands one more time. What thou seest to write, Father, in the name of Jesus, give us grace, O Lord God, to be diligent to write what you will show us in these last days. For you will show us the path to victory and not defeat. You said that you would lead us beside still waters and besides green pastures. Thank you, O Lord God. You will speak unto your people in these last days and give us victory. Give us dominion, O Lord God, over everything that has to do with darkness. We believe we receive this grace. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Good morning, good morning. Give someone a high five or a hug. Tell them you're glad to see them today. And you may be seated. Blessed be your holy name. Oh, Lord. Glad to see you out this morning. Again, thank you again for praying for us. I'll be okay. The anointing kicks in. I, uh, I might sniffle a little bit, but you don't have to avoid me. It's just, uh, I don't mean to be gross, it's just a little bit of mucus in my head for some reason on the last day of the trip I don't know what happened because I don't do like I'm the guy I can't sleep underneath the fan or AC unit and I swear that AC unit was off in that bedroom and I woke up and boom and uh and then the next day had to get up at four in the morning um for a flight that didn't take off till one and then the flight was 13 hours. So there's nothing worse than having all of that like that on a plane for 13 hours. And then on this plane, it seemed like they had new AC units. <laughs> Serious, man. So uh, and then um, so we'll make a couple announcements at the end also. And also, if you're a first, if you're a first time visitor or um, you came when my wife and I were not here, um, at the end of the service, um, we'll dismiss you into our conference room, and then my wife and I will just come and personally greet everyone. <laughs> Woo! Um, for you all that have kids, you know, um, I mean, you know, when your kids need to go someplace, they own you about time. But when you need to go someplace, and so what do you do? How many of you have done this? You walk past that room, Billy, get up. It's time to go. Okay. Come back two minutes later. 
Billy has simply switched sides. He has turned over and not a new leaf. Say, Billy, I said get up. Okay. And how I many know you keep on going, you keep on going by, you keep on, you keep on telling Billy, Billy, get up. We gotta go. We're getting ready to be late. And so if the child does not listen to your voice, you then switch over to mode two, which is you go in and you begin to shake the child. That's where we are in planet Earth right now. Planet Earth is not listening. And how many know, when you shake the child, it's only because if you don't shake that child at that moment, you're going to miss that opportunity. The shaking only comes at the exact last minute. Because if I don't shake you now, we will be out of time. Y'all got me? <clears throat> so we are now in the time frame of planet Earth. We are now in the time frame of planet Earth. Matthew 24, 8 calls the beginning of sorrows. A time when natural disasters are no longer natural. A time where the only thing on the menu is sorrow, terror, pain, and perversion. A time when everything right is declared as wrong, and everything wrong is declared as right. The Bible says that there was a time in Scripture, I'm sure some of you read this. The Bible says that there was a time where the society had become so bad in Israel that women start eating their own children. How many of y'all remember that? You probably stop reading the Bible right there, and you're like, yep, that's enough for today. <laughs> Yet, the time frame that we are now in will be worse than that. Okay? Matthew 24, 21 says, For there will be greater anguish than at any time since the world began. Every time I read that, I... Therefore, there will be greater anguish than at any time since the world began. That means it'll be worse than anything you read in the Bible. It will be worse than World War I, World War II. It'll be worse than anything. It'll be worse than 9-11. And it will never be so great again. In fact, unless that time of calamity is shortened, not a single person will survive. But it will be shortened for the sake of God's chosen ones. Okay. Daniel 12, 1 through 4 says, At that time, Michael, the archangel who stands guard over your nation, and lets you know that there is an archangel assigned over every nation. The Bible never calls them races. He calls them nations. <laughs> then there will be a time of anguish greater than any since nations first came into existence. <laughs> but at that time, every one of your people whose name is written in the book will be rescued. Every person's name who is written in the book will be rescued. It's not how you say amen when you know you're getting ready to be rescued. You went on a cruise ship and the thing said, you know, we've had engine failure and, and the ship is taking on water and we are in the middle of the Atlantic. But help is on the way. Everyone will be rescued. Amen. See, that's why as it gets worse, or oh, it's getting ready to get bad very quickly. But, but the people of God are supposed to be at peace about that. I mean, think about it. I know y'all don't like me to say this, but the worst thing could ever happen is you die and go to heaven. Amen. Daniel 12, 4. But you, Daniel, keep this prophecy a secret. Seal up the book until the time of the end, when many will rush here and there, and knowledge will increase. So this thing, this, this uh, cataclysmic situation in time, frame, and season would happen when we would have the ability to move with speed and there would be an explosion of knowledge. And there's been an explosion of knowledge. AI is not the explosion of knowledge. AI is the end of the explosion. The explosion of knowledge came around the time when, you know, the time of steel, Henry Ford and the Model T, you know, uh, Benjamin Franklin and his, um, uh, um, always, and we don't have to, you can have a march and come up with a different slogan. Benjamin Franklin did not discover electricity. It was revealed to him because the time had come for it to be revealed. Men are not that dumb where it takes you 6,000 years to discover electricity. There's a reason why, you notice all of the technology kind of all came around the same time? Okay. <clears throat> so it's during that time frame. Daniel 12, 9 through 10, he said, Go now, Daniel, for what I have said is kept secret and sealed until the time of the end. 
many will be purified, cleansed, and refined by these trials. It lets you know some of the stuff that you're going through that you're complaining about is God purifying your attitude, cleansing your heart, refining you and getting that charcoal off of the diamond. But the wicked will continue in their wickedness and none of them will understand. Only those who are wise will know what everything means. So you see a couple of things here in regards to there will be a time at the end. And one of the ways that the scripture says that you would know is there will be a time. You know, we've always talked about the wars and the rumors of wars. You know, we've been talking about the famines and, and wars and rumors of wars. Even Satan knows that. <laughs> okay, everybody knows that. You know, but the parts that people didn't kind of really hone in is some of the other stuff where it said that uh, it'll be a time of technology and you move with speed. The Bible makes it very, very clear that it would also be right before Jesus would bring this thing to a close that sexual perversion would explode. Okay, Scripture says that in several different places. That's why Jesus said, he said, right before I walk through the door, it'll be like it was in Noah's day and in Lot's day. And the two things that were brought out in Lois and Lot's day was sexual perversion. And not in Noah's day, it said angels came and had sex with women, produced offspring, half angel, half man, called Bible calls Nephilim. That's the reason why God destroyed planet Earth. Then part two says there, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, um, it says that there was not a straight man or boy in the city. That's insane. And so people are like, God, is this so mean he destroyed the whole city? Yeah, he destroyed a city so he wouldn't have to destroy a world. Okay. And so, uh, so you see that. And in both cases, the reason why you know that you're going to be rescued is because before God destroyed all of the wicked, what did he do with Noah? Made sure that he was in a safe place. And before he destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, what did he do with uh, Lot? He made sure that he was in a safe place. Okay? And so God does the same things the same way in that respect. And so when we come, and Jesus said, it'll be like it was in the days of Noah and it was days in the Lord, days of Lot, which means then that right before the major destruction comes, guess what? All of us are going to be going to heaven and watching all of this with Holy Spirit binoculars. <laughs> I'm going to ask for the ones you get at the opera. You know, the ones you do like this, like Jesus. I had no idea that the angel could do something like that. That is just unbelievable. Let me look at that. That's the Antichrist? I saw him at the airport when I was going to that area. That's him? I'm telling you. I'm not, I don't plan on being down here for nothing. So the issue, though, is, is that that's what is promised. But what is promised may not manifest if you don't walk circumspectly. The statement I wrote down is, many have struggled to survive in soft times. So if they struggle to survive in soft times, how will they survive in hard times? So, you know, the, I'm going with the theme, Bishop David Oudipo, which is um, uh, the theme for next year is redeemed to flourish in hard times. The Bible says it another way. You are not appointed to wrath. Over and over and over again, you see the same M.O. For those that don't live right, they end up in trouble. For those that do, God rescues them. Okay, now we have three weekends before this year. All three messages are geared to prepare us for next year. Uh, my style of preaching is going to be a little bit more tighter and more so that everyone can get it and understand. I'm not interested in style. I'm interested in substance. Amen. And I have to preach in such a way where everyone gets it from the five-year-old to the 105-year-old. So um, there will be three significant teachings, this one today, um, the one next weekend, and then the final one of this year on December 30th. Um, I probably shouldn't say this, but on December 30th, we will do that service, kind of prepare us for the new year, and then I will have a, a private meeting only with the local congregation. Online, don't worry, you're not missing out on nothing. It's something I have to reveal to the uh, local congregation. Um, and so, uh, um, because I don't, I don't want that information to be out, I will be, um, it'll just be here, here and the other location, the Sunday location. Um, I'll share some things with you. When I share you, are like, yeah, you need to keep that a secret, dog. <laughs> <laughs> and so I will pull the people in from Children's Church, the ushers, the parking lot, so that they will all be in um, here for that. And so, no, there will not be any special meetings on the side. I'm not going to pull you in a special video conference. It's, it's just, whew, be here or be sleep. 
Y'all got that. And I forgot we got baptisms today too, so we, we, uh, I'll just give you, you know, one of the things that I have been praying about. I said, Lord, in the book of Acts, there's a reason I pulled back everything 100%. You know, it was, you know, it was deep, is that I didn't pull back the substance, but it was in- interesting. I was like, well, why is it as I'm shutting down things, the enemy is still trying to move in closer, almost like he's trying to stop me from stopping it. Even that Wednesday night service, I knew that was going to mess with my head, but I canceled it anyway. There are times when you need to shut the whole machine down so you are not deceived by the noise of the engine that's running to keep you, okay? So I said, let me just shut this down, and I just sent certain things. And so and I understand why the Lord was having me shut it down. You know, um, right now, the tr- I'm going to show you a video, just a four-minute video by Francis Chan. Um, and um, we, at this moment, we have to begin to do ministry different. We will seem like the abnormal, but many others will be the abnormal. Everybody does it the same way. And so, uh, but the Lord is going to answer the question in regards to, in the book of Acts, it said daily. See, right now, I hate to say it, and I'm not judging anybody, don't get me wrong, because I don't know what they do, but typically... You know, daily at the typical church means we're open for office work and counseling. But that wasn't daily in the book of Acts. Daily in the book of Acts was uh, we were always meeting in the temple with prayers, and they loved to eat. That's the thing. It was prayer, praying. See, I was down for the eating part, you know. It was praying, eating, fellowship, casting out demons, getting people healed. And so, so, you know, so trust me when I share this with you, I want you, I want you, I want you to imagine the church being open and we evangelizing. And, and so office hours are the hours that we standing around the building and evangelizing. And as we evangelize people, we pull them right into the church building and baptize them right on the spot. That's just one little small, that's a little itty bitty cupcake appetizer thing. So you have to be in that meeting, you know, to understand that. So I'm going to have them play this. Uh, Francis Chan used to be a pastor of a mega church. And he just gave it up because of the eternal reward system. And he said, I'm not losing my reward. Many pastors will. And uh, so I just want you to watch this video for a moment, listen to what he said, and then I'll pick up with the uh, rest of the message. When we, were in, when we were in China, you know, we went to the underground church. I always wanted to see what is that like? What is, what is it really like? And we went to this, uh, this training uh, thing for for, for underground uh, church leaders that, that wanted to be missionaries and go to the Middle East and everywhere else. And, you know, and the leader was saying, yeah, well, we'll take you there, but we can't take your whole family. It's just kind of crazy. It's, it, you know, it could be a little dangerous. And so I said, all right, all right, I'll just take my oldest daughter. She's the most expendable. We'll, we'll go and we'll go hang out. And so we go, we walk in. And you ever been in one of those places where it's just filled with the Spirit? Like you just walk in, you hear the prayers of the people, the, the, the singing, the crying, the weeping, the intensity of prayer. And you go, man, this is nuts. This is, an, and, 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 and so I'm supposed to speak. And again, do you know how embarrassing it is to speak at places like that? Where you go, I, I don't know. I don't know what you guys go through, man. I, don't, I haven't touched it. And I said, can you guys please just teach me instead? Can you please tell me stories of your persecution? And they, and they, were, they were like tripping out over me. They, they're just like, why, why do you want to hear this stuff? I go, oh. they, they said, everyone gets persecuted. I go, no, not everyone. I, I said, you know, not where I come from. And I said, so tell me stories. And they're telling me stories of, uh, of government coming and, and guns going off and them running for their lives or hiding. And I'm just sitting there like a little kid just going, wow, yeah, tell me more, tell me more. And different people would just stand up. Oh, one time this happened, one time this happened. And I'm just, you know, my daughter and I, you know, our eyes are as big as mine get, you know, it's just like, whoa, you know, like, wow, this is, this is ridiculous. This is, this is insane. And, and again, they were just so confused by me. They're like, why do you like this so much? And, and I go, I go, you got to understand where I come from. I, I said, see, in America, we have these buildings in our cities called churches, and we just do services in, on them and, you know, in them. And so people just, they go and attend a service. And uh, it's just like an hour, maybe an hour and a half, a week. And, and if uh, another church has a better speaker, they'll switch. 
you know? And, uh, and I said, or if the music's better or child care's better. And this, is, this was the weirdest part of it. They started laughing hysterically. I mean, it wasn't like, haha, or all oh, that's sad, or are oh, you kidding? I mean, hysterically, to where my daughter Rachel afterwards, like, Dad, was that the weirdest thing? I go, Yes. <laughs> she goes, They were like laughing, thinking you're the funniest guy on earth. They're just, and I wasn't trying to be funny, you know? It, it, it's, it, it was just one of those times where they're laughing hysterically because they're going, How did you get that from this? Are you kidding me? You, that's what you guys do? And, 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 and it just confirmed. I just went away. I go, exactly. See, that's what I always thought too. But you don't understand when you're in it, a lot of these things make sense. And you almost go, well, that, and that's why I came here. I wanted to be with you guys. And, and just, uh, I never thought it made sense. There was always something that bothered me. I, I'm just like, your lives make sense. The people in India, their lives made sense. Their view of Christianity made sense. It was congruent with the scriptures. But ever since I was a kid, I would read this and go to church and go, Gosh, it doesn't quite, I, it's not even close, I don't think. You know, how can we do this? How can it be so off? And then you, you realize, wait, when you, you just put China and India together, you know, they're both over a billion people. Okay, well, we're talking about 40% of the whole earth's population in those two countries, and that's the way they view Christianity. And here we are in the U.S., maybe 4% of the earth's population. And the way we view it and the way we do it, you understand, it's just weird. It's laughable to other people. And that's why there was just this heart of, I, I gotta come back. No, I know now. Okay, I've always thought this, and I've known it. It's just you get questioned and by all these people, and you start to question yourself. And that's why I went. I go, you know what? This is exactly what I needed. This is exactly what I thought. And now, God, could something like that happen here? These are the people I love most. These are the people I've spent my time with. Is there something we can do? Man, well, Thank you. Hallelujah. I thought that was very powerful. And uh, I had the same experience when I told the Nigerians that most churches in America don't do street evangelism. They bust out laughing. Well, what do y'all do? Well, we have church services. They bust out laughing again. <laughs> Just, and so, and if you were like me, where was I at? Oh, I went to get a little something to eat for my wife and I. I was in there. I don't know how the discussion came up. And they said, what were you doing in Nigeria? And I said, well... Short, long story short, I said, um, um, I wanted to be the Bible and not just read it. And, and that's where the church is stuck. And, and let me tell you something, and, and, and how they stick themselves in it is by making it look really, really pretty. There are some churches that look really, really good. I mean, when I tell you, I mean, I saw some churches and they look so good. I'm talking about from the paint and the style. It looked so good. I started to quit being the pastor and go join their church. I mean, it was just like, this is amazing. And, um, and I was looking at one two days ago, and then that feeling comes like, well, you know, you don't have all of that, and, and yet none of that means anything. I mean, I have to be totally honest with you. Um, I very much, uh, let me be careful how I say this, going to the continent of Africa, India, Pakistan, all of the Middle East, um, even parts of China, definitely places we can't get into, like Iran, North Korea. You know, the United States is in a bubble. It's very much in a bubble, and that bubble has convinced us that we're doing things right because we're on top maybe militarily or politically or financially, and the United States is not on top financially. We're in debt more than any other country in the world. <clears throat> And so, and, and, and so, how I many know sometimes you didn't know you were poor until you left the neighborhood? You didn't know there was a ghetto until you left it. And, and so sometimes that, and, and watch this, and then sometimes if you grow up rich, you didn't know was, there was a problem until you left the suburbs. 
you have to leave where you are sometimes to get a better scope of certain things. And, you know, I've been to the Philippines, been to South Korea, Hawaii doesn't count. <clears throat> you know, and it's just interesting to see how things are being done differently. Persecution in the United States is you put up a post on social media and someone didn't like it. Persecution in the Middle East is a testimony I just read of a Muslim. Jesus appeared to him in a dream and said, I am the Messiah. He accepted the Lord when he told his family members. They used 20 gallons of gasoline to set him on fire. But he didn't burn. Okay. So that's normal. So when you read about the persecution and the beheadings and the Christians who would lose their lives, people in the United States says, well, that's not really going on, so it's going to be a while for Jesus to come back. Wrong answer. That's normal. I have read stories about, I mean, and it's, uh, it depended on with it, I don't know, in, in kind of, I don't know if it's India, Pakistan, I have to ask for not. Um, but, but, I mean, they can be very, very, Violent when you turn. See, with Christianity, you leave Christianity, we'll pray for you. You leave other places, they kill you. I mean, I don't think about it. It's a whole church underneath the ground in China. And I wish I could have shown you the video of when they all just got a Bible. Many of them don't have a Bible, so what they do is they pass it around and memorize it. <clears throat> so I will either go to heaven with the testimony of, I did it the same. And there, how many of you have been to church? We need to get back to this. We need to get back to this. We need to get, get back to prayer. We need to get back to holy. Ed. Well, first of all, we should have never left it in the first place. But the fact that y'all are just talking about what we need to do, it's like a person says, I need to lose weight. I need to get in shape. I need to eat better. I need, 30 years later, I'm still trying. I, I need to. There, and, and let me tell you something, because I'm going to just roll through this. We are not in the time frame where you have time to get on top of anything. We are not in the time frame of, you got time, I'm, I'll, I'm, I'm working on it. No, we're in the time frame of, I would advise you to flip it and do it. Again, the dream that the Lord gave me, and I'll share it one more time. I was in the dream, and man with the, it's funny, I think the top, I don't know what it is about Nigeria, the top 10 largest churches in planet Earth all in Nigeria. It's crazy. But Oyedipo, he was preaching over here, and I was surprised because it was a tent, and there were only like 13 people in the audience. And after the service was over with, I ran up to him, and I said, Sir, my name is Otha from America. I'm coming to visit you in December at your conference. Here's the dream. And he said, Oh, wonderful. And, uh, and then he got right in my face, really serious, this close. He said, What must be done in America, I cannot do, but you can do it, my son. <clears throat> ah, see, I'm doof. I didn't take that dream serious. Sometimes you better be careful about getting caught up in the essence of the dream versus the meaning of the dream. Because that's a huge responsibility. You know, the first question is, what needs to be done? He did not say what needs to be done in Atlanta. He said what needs to be done in America, I can't do it. That's the reason why when you study and look at every satellite church from Nigeria around the world, there are only Nigerians in that church. He can't do it. He's not called to do it. He tried. He, he and Yonggi Cho, the South Korean pastor that I was mentored under, they both tried to open up churches in Japan, and both of them failed. And the Lord told both of them, y'all thought y'all could open up churches in Japan because y'all are the biggest things in planet Earth. I didn't call you to open up a church in Japan. Let me give this to you as a word. You better find out what you're doing wrong and stop it. Because Bishop Oyedipo opened up, I believe, 20 churches in Japan. One of them had 2,000 members. And he said, then all of a sudden, all of them start going berserk at the same time. All of them. So he went to the Lord and said, Lord, why is this going on? And this is a strong reply. Simple. He said, I'm not with you. You open up those churches, not me. <laughs> and Oyedipo is crazy. He shut them down the next day. No, uh, we have a meeting. Let's see what we can do. No, this is not an analyzing. We don't need to get on top of this. I disobeyed God. He shut, and one of them had 2,000 members. Shut all 20 churches down the next day. He said he brought all of the podiums back to Nigeria. <laughs> and every place where he shut it down, another guy went in there and started it up. Because it was, a, don't fight somebody else's battle in these last days. Oh. Amen. Amen. <laughs> 
there is a set of twins ruling over the churches in America. Their names are routine and convenience. <laughs> Holy Spirit gave me that directly the moment I dropped down. More and more people are doing what they like and not what is right. Okay? And so that's why I'm starting over. Hebrews 2, 3 says, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? So it is you doing what you like instead of what you write that can make you be set aside for rescue. Y'all got me? So it's going to be very, very important in these last days, starting from today, for everyone to serve God acceptably. So today's teaching, next week's teaching, it's for the purpose of gearing you up for that. I will not be, the, the stuff that I teach, if you practice it, you will simply go high. It, it's, it's, and that's something, the instruction that we were given. Make sure that everything that comes out of your mouth from now on sprung from Scripture. Hebrews 12, 28. Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear, for our God is a consuming fire. So we must serve God acceptably. Again, we weren't, many weren't doing it right in good times. When hard times show up, you better make sure that you're doing it. Okay? Revelation 3.2, wake up, strengthen what little remains, for even what is left is almost dead. I find that your actions do not meet the requirements of my God. Okay. <clears throat> Isaiah 38. About that time, and see, that's, that's a very strong statement. That was something that Jesus said to a church. He said, I find that your actions do not meet the requirements of my God. The worst thing to go to heaven is, <laughs> the worst thing to do is to go to heaven and you got a laundry list of all of the stuff you did for God. He's like, Wonderful. But that's not what the standard was. Oh, man, I could go both ways with this, but I'm not going on relationships, and I'll just give you an example. Ladies, if a man asks for one and two, don't give him six and seven and say that you're a good wife. Well, I gave him six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Wonderful. That's what people are going to do with God. He didn't ask for 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. He asked for 1 and 2. So you have not been obedient and a good wife until you do 1 and 2. But I do all of this. Wonderful. That's what people are going to do. Didn't we do this, this, this? And Jesus says, I don't know who you are. Gentlemen, if your wife asks for a flower, don't buy her a plant because they last longer. Y'all not pulling me in with that today. <laughs> Isaiah 38, that's what it means. Find out what the requirement is and do it so that you can be blessed. Isaiah 38, 1 through 5. About that time, Hezekiah became deathly ill, and the prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, went to visit him. He gave the king this message. This is what the Lord says. Set your affairs in order, for you are going to die. How many know when Jesus says you're going to die, you're getting ready to die? You will not recover from this illness. When Hezekiah heard this, he turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord. Remember, O oh Lord. Everybody should have a list that you would go to God with reminding him of you doing the right thing. Remember, man, how I have always been what? Faithful. I have always been faithful to you and have served you single-mindedly always doing what pleases you. Then he broke down and wept bitterly. Then this message came to Isaiah from the Lord. Go back to Hezekiah, in case you don't think God might change his mind sometime. Go back to Hezekiah and tell him, this is what the Lord, the God of your ancestors, David says. I have heard your prayer and seen your tears. I will add 15 years to your life and I will rescue you and this city from the king of Assyria. Yes, I will defend this city. From now on, your service is going to cause God to defend you. Your service will cause God to rescue you. Your service is going to cause God to prosper you, heal you, lift you up, Amen. take you high. Amen. So the key is how do you serve God acceptably? So let's roll through these so you can understand the basics. 
you must serve him willingly. 1 Corinthians 9, 17. For if I do this thing willingly, I have a reward. But if against my will, a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me. In other words, if you do it willingly, God will reward you. If you do it with an attitude, you might as well stay at home. <clears throat> there are some that are not willing to help God <laughs> when it comes to serving. They're not willing to help God when it comes to praying, help God when it comes to serving, help God when it comes to evangelizing, help God when it comes to giving. Most people use God. They don't love him. Most people don't love God. We'll talk about it. Most people use God. They come to church to see what the Lord can do for me. He already did everything. You're spending, you, I mean, let me tell you something. You need to get the revelation of I will never die. Amen. You need to get that revelation. And you got to sit there and say, I will never die. I will never die. And then it'll hit you. I will never die. And Jesus did that for me. Now it's your turn. I was joking my, with myself the other day, you know, that term in the church. Won't he do it? I wonder if Jesus is, Jesus needs to say that about you. Amen. Won't he do it? <laughs> Won't she do it? <laughs> Isaiah 119, if you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. See, some people are obedient, but they're not willing. They do it because they're scared of God, afraid of God. He said, if you're willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. How many people are planning on eating the good of the land next year? I don't care what. Matter of fact, uh, you know, I, I plan on going higher next year, not lower. I don't care nothing about how much gas costs, groceries cost, the economy costs. None of that has to do with anything. Isaac sold in a desert and got the biggest famine he ever got. I'm sorry, the biggest blessing, not a famine. A blessing. Still trying to recover. Number two, you must serve him faithfully. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found what? Faithful. A man be found what? Faithful. Man be found what? Faithful. Matthew 24. Who then is a faithful and wise servant whom his Lord has made ruler over his household to give them meat and in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he comes, shall find so doing. Truly I say unto you, he shall make him ruler over all his goods. Your Faithfulness determines your degree of rulership on the other side. Luke 19, 17. Well done, the king exclaimed. You are a good servant. You have been faithful with the little I entrusted to you. So you will be governor of ten cities as your reward. What you are faithful over now, you can't even compare what he's going to reward you with. Okay? That's one thing I decided to do. You all, I've... I've I've worked too hard trying to get people to do the right thing that don't want to do the right thing. You know, I told myself, I didn't, tell, I didn't tell my wife or kids, anybody else, you know, I won't be begging people to come to church. You know, if you want to stay at home, you're either going to do the right thing or you'll be put into the category of the unfaithful. I won't be begging people to give, which I never have, but you're either going to do it or you'll be put into the category of the unfaithful. I won't be begging people to serve. You're either going to do it or you'll be put into the category of the uh, uh, unfaithful. No one here will be put in the category of unfaithful. I said, no one here will be put into the category of the unfaithful. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't mean to be rude, but I was doing a spiritual growth class, and a lady asked me a question. I have to be sensitive, of course, to some particularly maybe single women with a large amount of kids that in a situation or something. But a lady asked me when I was doing the, one of the spiritual growth classes, and I was talking about tithing. And she said, well, what if I can't afford to do it? I said, I don't have an answer because there's not a second set of instructions in the Bible for people that can't do it. So I don't know what to tell you. I can only tell you what to do if you want to do it and the blessings that come with doing it. So, so uh, there's not a second set of instructions for people that are not faithful in any area. You understand what I'm saying? And people get mad. You can get mad all I want to because I'm not going to tell you if he didn't give me. Never mind. You must serve him cheerfully. Everybody smile. Amen. <laughs> you must serve him cheerfully. Deuteronomy 28. If you do not serve the Lord your God with joy and enthusiasm for the abundant benefits you have received, you will serve your enemies whom the Lord will send against you. 
You will be left hungry, thirsty, naked, and lacking in everything. The Lord will put an iron yoke on your neck, oppressing you harshly until he has destroyed you. Hey, I don't need that. What's that little song? Hopefully it's not a... Put on a happy face. <sighs> Never mind. <laughs> I need to find out what these songs... Never mind. That song, uh, what was that song by... Uh, I was so mad about that song. Um, because I'm happy... I was like, man, I'm not, nah, you know, I mean, hands up to Pharrell. I was like, man, that should have been a church song that we march into every single week. You know what I'm saying? I love that song. Okay? Your cheerfulness attracts God. Your frowning and complaining attracts Satan. What people do is they do the right thing, they think, and then when it doesn't work out or they go through, they immediately resort to complaining. And the reason why it hasn't turned around is because you didn't finish the last part of the equation, <laughs> uh, which is Thanksgiving. In everything, not for, in, not for, in everything, give thanks. <laughs> Proverbs fifteen fifteen. For the despondent, every day brings trouble. For the happy heart, life is a continual feast. You have not met your weight in worth until you can be happy when there's nothing to be happy about. That's when it changes. And what you know what people do? They do it for a day. I gave God thanks for a day. Wonderful. <clears throat> it's amazing. Second Chronicles 9, 2 Corinthians 9, 7. You must each decide in your heart how much to give. Don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure. I'm going to read that again. For y'all to go to churches where they have three and four offerings. And don't give reluctantly or in, you ain't never heard a, prayer or a reverend read that one, have you? Don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure. For God loves a person who gives what? Cheerfully. So the reverend may want your money, but Jesus says you can keep it if you ain't happy about it because you need it more than I do. Number four, you must serve him righteously. Isaiah 52, 11. Get out. Get out and leave your captivity where everything you touch is unclean. Get out of there and purify yourselves. In other words, get away from anything that has to do with sin. Uh, Malachi 3. And he shall sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver. And he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. That's another thing. See, I can say stuff like that because I plan on going high like y'all. But for you all that believe in tithes and offerings, you might want to keep your money while you're living in sin. Because God wants you to give an offering in righteousness. Not because the church needs it. Churches always need money. <clears throat> to be able to do the things that the Lord called them to do. But don't think God is getting ready to be bankrupt because you don't do the right thing. Giving is never for God. It's always for you. It will determine certain things on the other side. Giving is never. How does somebody who created everything need your $500? Explain that to me. And I, I know people. I, I ran into a guy yesterday. I think he was a drug dealer. He just had that look. He had that dress. His chains probably cost more than my house. And, uh, but I sensed. What, this is what I sensed about him. I gave him a card because he asked a question. This is what I sensed. I sensed that he's in the wrong lifestyle, and he's looking to go to a church service at the end of the year as like this penance. You know, a lot of drug dealers do that. A lot of mafia men do that, you know. And I told you, I used to, oh, I don't know if they could always be listening, but no, I don't care if they're listening. I used to have a barber, and, and that's what he and his father would do. He said they go to church once a year, and they get there, and they just give an offering, and then they leave out. And, and they're going to go before the Lord. Well, well, Lord, I mean, don't you remember when I, when I gave money to the church? First of all, the one you gave it to wasn't a church. Um, I didn't even call that guy. Um, I had already shut him down in the spirit, because when I shut you down in the spirit, you still may keep your job. It just won't work. 
Second thing is, what made you uh, be deceived to think that I needed your thousand dollars when you stopped by the church? Explain that to me. Okay, your business would have been in the trash if I hadn't have kept it in flow. Because the goodness of God is what causes evil men to repent. So I was being good to you for your little shop, hoping that you might get some sense. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Oh, hallelujah. Everybody said, I'm going, I'm going higher. Okay, so again, see, this is what it means about to serve God acceptably. Right now, people are doing what they like. And see, see, let me tell you something. Two people that, two individuals that really deceive themselves are individuals who, who they're a prayer warrior. So the prayer warriors don't think they have to obey the rest of the scriptures in the Bible. I didn't read anything that, that these are the things that you must obey when it comes to the kingdom of God, but these are the people that you are exempt from this process. If you have a title, if you have been to Bible school, if you cast out a lot of demons, if you are a prayer warrior, if you give a lot of money to the church, any of you ever read any of scriptures? No. It says, what I say to one, I say to what? All. Oh. So everybody keeps creating their own standard, and then they're wondering why, you know. I plan on doing the stand of the Lord. That's for me and my house. Amen. Uh, you must serve him lovingly. Deuteronomy 10, 12. And now, Israel, what does the Lord thy God require of thee but to fear the Lord thy God? To, this, to fear the Lord thy God, that's one thing. To walk in his ways, that's another thing. And to love him, that's a third thing. And to serve the Lord thy God, that's a fourth thing. With all thy heart and with all thy soul. When you do something with all your heart and all of your mind, will, and emotions, we can tell. <clears throat> the Lord says, I will rescue those who what? Love me. Is that up there? Notice it didn't say, I will rescue those who go to church. I will rescue those who give a lot of money to the church. I will rescue those who pray for a long time. I will rescue those who've been on the battlefield a long time. They cracked me up with that one. I've been on the battlefield a long time. Wonderful. <laughs> Bishop Oedipo said something over at the conference this week. He said, for those that's been on a battlefield a long time, he said, there is no such thing as being on a road for a long time where you don't have to follow directions. Right. Lord says, I will rescue those who love me. I will protect those who trust in my name. When they call on me, I will answer. I will be with them in trouble. And since trouble is here to stay and it is not going away, it's only going to get progressively worse. He said, I will call, I will answer those who call me in trouble. But the category is, I will answer those who love me, not those who go to church. Okay. So since that's the last one, you must serve him lovingly. Well, let's finish this by... Let's just read these very quickly. This will take more, all, all of five minutes. Well, what are the six proofs of the true love of God? So we know we've got to serve him, okay, consistently, faithfully, cheerfully, all of those things. Serve him, okay, with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, okay? Okay, <clears throat> love is the most important, but here are six proofs of true love for God. Number one, if you love God, you will love his word. Mm, mm, mm. Psalm 119, 97. Oh, how I love thy law. It is my meditation all the day. Not every once in a while, all the day. Not a Bible in the back seat so everybody can see in my rear view window that I go to church all the time. Not open during Thanksgiving so people can see that I'm spiritual. You blow the thing and it's got dust and angels come in. It is my meditation all the day. How many of you know anything that you really, really, really love, you can't wait to do it? Amen. And see, the world is an acquired taste. Let me tell you something. If all you eat is chicken wings and pizza and hamburgers, and then they take you to vegetables or us, <laughs> you're not having it. But do you know that if you were forced to only eat vegetables and nothing else, after about two weeks, you would love it. 
because things are an acquired taste. So you have to get in the word by faith. And then eventually your taste buds will adjust. And what was difficult, it'll not be difficult to stay away from it. That's why some of y'all, y'all don't need an ice cream scoop. That's one of the things I have to be careful. You bring, y'all know Talenti ice cream? That Talenti ice cream that comes in a canister? Yeah, just. Yeah, I, don't even, I, don't think, I don't think I've ever eaten one of the eight, eaten whatever the word is. And I didn't take the whole thing down in one sitting. And just, just, why? Because I love Talenti ice cream, you know? But there's some stuff that you will go through, whole sweet potato pie. Or a buffet. You are out of order if you get kicked out of a buffet. <laughs> and it happens. Ask the people that own the buffets. Hey, one guy said he was at a Chinese restaurant. It was a buffet. And the lady, the cook came out. All you can eat does not mean all you can eat. <laughs> they were some football players. If you own a buffet and you see a group of football players show up, we are now closed for the next two hours. <laughs> The football players would sit there, and that metabolism is burning their food. They would sit there and, and then eat it, and then let it burn off, and then go back up to the table an hour later. So she came out. Remember that restaurant? We got in trouble. It was all you can eat. It was an it was, uh, Ethiopian restaurant in Detroit, and, um, and we went there on zero. And, and, and it's all you can eat, so they bring it out. And it's very healthy food, so it's not heavy. And so we went through one, and then we asked for another one. And I think by the time, and this is a lot of food, and, and, and we, we asked for the third one, we looked up and we saw the cook standing by the door. <laughs> Just staring at us. And I was like, I think this is supposed, that, that means <laughs> this is supposed to be our last plate. <sighs> if you love God, you will love his word. Next graphic, if you love God, you will love his house. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Let us go, not let us watch. <laughs> Watching the house of the Lord is only for the people who cannot get there. I was, one of the things about, you know, when you go Middle East, India, Pakistan, Africa, China, these places, y'all, you know, like 84% of people on the planet don't have a car. We had to get up at 4 o'clock in the morning on a Sunday to head to the airport. It's only 11 miles away, but one incident can turn that into a four-hour trip. It's not an exaggeration. And so, so it's dark. And in that part of Nigeria, when it's dark, it's dark for real. You know, like it is, the only light is the headlights. You know what I'm saying? The moon is like, yeah, we're having problems today. I can't really shine. <laughs> what messed me up is the hundreds of women out there walking on the road, on that dangerous road, four or five o'clock in the morning, walking to get to church. Now, I didn't jogging pants and gym shoes to make the walk easy nice dresses and sandals. And once in a while you see a woman, they standing out there waiting to see if a motorcycle will pick them up. You know, you know, you know overseas they have those um, motorcycles and I can't remember the little three-wheelers, what they're called. Yeah. And so, and they're just waiting to see if they can get somebody to pick them up to take them to church. It's five o'clock, you know, four or five o'clock in the morning. Pitch black. And we only saw them because the headlights show them. You just see them all over the place walking to get to church. Walking, walking. Got to, some of them got to walk for hours. You know, the, the couple in Zimbabwe, you remember that, what, they used to walk. How many miles? 19. 19 miles. One way. One way. And you got people, they 10 minutes away. Huh? Let me take the temperature. It's amazing what people will do for the devil, but what they won't do for Jesus. And I was just sitting there with tears in my eyes. And what, you know, Chinese brother was just talking about, that's, that's what we see when we go over there. We see the commitment. It, it's, I don't understand. Why is it that the ones who have the most do nothing with it? 
And the ones who do the least, have the least, they do everything. I was appalled at the fact that this man has, let me tell you something. If you want to get convicted, go to the Shiloh Conference in Nigeria. We call it Shiloh, but it's actually pronounced Shiloh. Um, um, majority of the planet pronounces things correctly. We in America own some other stuff, you know. But, you know, um, the, the, it's amazing. We went to early morning prayer every morning. Early morning prayer is not by conference call like here in America. Early morning prayer is you get up and go to the building. Early morning, now they stream it also online, but early morning prayer is you get up and go to the building. It's the most appalling thing in the world to get up and you get in the building and watch this. Prayer starts at 5.30, but you get there early at 5 to get a good seat at an arena that holds 50,000 people. And you're like, did we get here? Is it 5 p.m. or is it 5 a.m.? You know what I'm saying? And, and, then, and then I want you to think about this. That conference, they have early morning prayer from 530. Thank you. You saw my lost look. From 6 to 7. Then they take a 15-minute break. And then they have, you know, they have a worship set, a couple of announcements, a couple of testimonies, and the preach word. And then you don't go home. Oh, that, that was phase one. Phase two is another worship song, some more announcements, some more testimonies, and then the preach word. You still don't go home. You then go to phase three. Then you go to phase four. So by the time you go through those four phases every morning, you got a church at about 1130. <laughs> you wouldn't like, man, I was done after the prayer for an hour. <laughs> I was done. And then you have to take a break, and then we go to the minister sessions from 1 to 3. Then you take a break, and they crack me up with that. Uh, go home and refresh yourself. How? We only got one hour. <laughs> and what? You just go home? We'll go home and, and just, just lean on the couch like this, you know. It's, <laughs> well, time to go. <clears throat> it's insane, you know. And the, the reason why there's so much power there is because there's so much pain there. See, when the Africans worship, when the Indians worship, when the Arabs worship, okay, when the Chinese people underground worship, it's, it's not style, it's substance. There are people that they will not go to a church because they don't like praise and worship. Well, it wasn't supposed to be the sound. You're unwilling to at least say words to the king? I have to be totally honest with you. I don't particularly care for that particular style of music that they play, but I don't care. I'm singing the songs because music is very, very powerful. Don't get me wrong. But if you don't like the music, it might be wise for you to focus on the words because I've heard a sound that I didn't like, so I switched to the words and got emotional because of the words in spite of this. I understand what I'm saying. And if you don't do this acceptably, it'll turn into a religious experience, and then you have all these wonderful excuses as to why you don't need to step into the place. Oh, man, we're almost done. If you love God, you will love his house. I was glad when they said unto me. Number, next one. If you love God, you will obey him. True love for God means obeying his commands, and his commands don't weigh us down as heavy burdens. Ooh, this is too hard. No, it's not. You don't want to do it. Anything you don't want to do is too hard and cute and making lim if I don't want to if I don't want to make lemonade that's too hard you know what I'm saying? Watch this. How many of you know? How many of you, if you live in a two-story house, you went upstairs and mistakenly left something downstairs? <laughs> Was it that difficult to go downstairs and get it? No, but because you did not want to do it, it became difficult. Amen. And some you know, and if it was a cell phone, you're like, you know what? It is 8 p.m., and I don't believe I need my cell phone tonight. <laughs> I think I'm, you understand what I'm saying? Something very, very simple becomes very difficult when you don't want to do it. And if you don't have the attitude, there, there are different people who take on different attitudes, and you can't explain why. One attitude that I have took upon myself years ago, and I don't know why. I don't know why. I said, I will never be mad at God. 
He is always right, and I am always wrong. And to this day, I have never been mad at God about anything. I have been frustrated with my situation and never turned it against God. I've been frustrated with my situation, but I've never once been mad at God. Why? He's perfect. Okay? The situation is frustrating because maybe I'm the one that put myself in it. It's a scripture that says people tear up their own lives and then get mad at God. And so maybe I don't see clearly because the Bible says that we see everything through a dim glass. You know, I don't know the past. I don't know the future. I don't know what's fighting against me. I don't know the answer that's coming in the next 10 minutes. Why would I be mad at God? That's why the Bible says in everything give thanks. That is going to be one of the most powerful weapons for the saints in the last days is giving thanks. If you love him, you will evangelize. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It's the power of God and the salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Evangelizing doesn't have to do with just going door to door. Evangelizing has to do with being a witness with your lifestyle, encouraging people to do the right thing, encouraging them to come to church, encouraging them with YouTube videos, talking to them about their life, learning how to get people saved, leading them to Christ, encouraging them, praying for them. All of that is evangelism. But if you don't love God, you won't really love people that much. You understand what I'm saying? Next graphic. If you love him, you will help others. First John 3.17. If someone has enough money to live well and sees a brother or sister in need but shows no compassion, how can God's love be in that person? Because if you love him, you will help others. If you love him, you will give faithfully to his cause. 2 Corinthians 8, 7 through 8. Since you excel in so many ways in your faith, your gifted speakers, your knowledge and your enthusiasm, and your love from us, I want you to excel also in this gracious act of giving. I am not commanding you to do this, but I am testing how genuine your love is by comparing it with the eagerness of other churches. Talk is cheap. You can always tell what somebody believes based on what they do with their finances. Don't go to heaven, and they say, well, it's obvious you didn't love the church that much. You love your house. You loved your cars. You love nice clothes. You love going on vacation. You loved being in debt, and you love buying stupid stuff. But it's obvious by when we look at the record here, you did not love the house of God. You were not interested in uh, helping God. See, remember, the, the prosperity plan is for you. It's a test to see what you, what you will be given on earth. The Bible says that if you are not faithful with unrighteous money, who will give you the true riches? The true riches are so high level, they don't, they don't even tell you what it is. But they said there is another level of riches that you will have to deal with for eternity. And based on what you do with your finances down here, boom. Hallelujah. In the kingdom of God, love is determined by what you do for him, not what you read about him. It's determined by what you do for him, not what you hear about him. In the kingdom, it's about what you do for him, not what you say about him, what you do for him. James 1.22, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Any area where you are not doing the word, you are operating in deception, and that deception darkens the revelation that you think you already know. The Bible says, be careful that the light you think you have is not a form of darkness. If any be a hearer of the word, just go to church, just whatever, and not a doer, he is likened to a man beholding his natural face in a glass. He beholds himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what manner of man he was. It's a crazy thing to look in the mirror and you forget what you look like. Okay? So there's a great deception that comes from not doing the word. Love of God is based on what you do for him, not based on what you say. A lot of people say, I hear the board talking about, I love God. Really? Not according to your lifestyle. Everybody loves God until he tells them what to do. Oh, man. Let me see something for the married people. You know, I'm not into this stuff, getting married, just accepting them who they are. Jesus doesn't do that. First thing, Jesus will accept you as you are. Would you agree? Yes. And the moment you say, I do, he says, now nah, I need you to start changing. Right. 
Hey, what was this a trick? No, uh, uh-uh, no, no, no. Think about that. The moment you get married to Jesus, okay, they will accept you. Man, I just, I just came from Dracula's den. We will accept you if you will accept the blood. Our blood is greater than Dracula's blood. That's going to be a very big issue in the future, by the way, is the battle of bloods. Witchcraft blood versus the blood of Jesus Christ. More and more, this is being... It's not secret anymore. Um, you're going to see witchcraft become a very bold next month. Don't let me forget about the magazine. I was sitting up there thinking, you see, I'm crazy. I'm really crazy sometimes because <laughs> for us, he was like, yes, yes, you are. Yes, you are. And I was just like, you know what would be cool? I said, I should go on social media and create a contest. Ten of the top witches against ten of the top Holy Ghost people. I was literally, I was literally, I was literally seriously thinking about, I said, that would be, that would be a great viral video. I ain't even thinking about the kingdom. I'm just thinking about destroying darkness. I said, ten witches against ten Holy Ghost people. I said, no, that wouldn't be fair. Maybe we should do ten, two Holy Ghost people against a hundred witches. Maybe that might be fair. And then me and my crazy self, no. Maybe just one man against 500 witches. <laughs> no, that's still unfair. Because it was a prophet in, by the name of Elijah who took on 900 by himself. Uh, well, maybe we shouldn't have the contest because it's not even fair. <laughs> you know, the witches going to hear this and be like, who is this boy? He ain't a boy, he's a lion. And lions are never intimidated by rats. They just stump on them. All powers of darkness seem some, some, seem some type of way until the light shows up. It's a reason why roaches and bugs run when the light shows up. It's a reason why night animals run under the light. But I was getting to my point. Let me say y'all something. Darkness can be done multiple different ways. But the light can only be done one way. If you go into the forest, how many of you know the forest is dark? And because the forest is dark, you can go multiple different ways. The darkness is this way. 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 But in the midst of the darkness, if someone shines the light, it's only one way. Amen. Let me tell y'all something that y'all, um, well, I'll talk about this later. Because I'm going to be setting a different platform for the youth and the kids. The stuff that they are dealing with, let me tell you all something. I know this is going to make you all a little bit squeamish. There are some terms you need to be familiar with. Um, uh, um, womb, womb work, W-O-M-B, spiritual womb work, is which is really tapping over into the power of false blood. The Bible says that the life is in the blood. And so more and more in society, um, people are drinking blood more and more because in their mind, um, because there's life in blood, um, when you drink it, it gives you more power because there's life in it. And, and the, more, the more innocent the blood, the more powerful it is. Okay? Um, one of the big things about abortion is just simply the dark side has made it clear that we need blood in order to thrive. That's what abortion is about. Abortion is about nothing. It's not even about murder. It's about blood. When that blood is shed, boom, it empowers darkness. That's why they, they, need a mach- they need a machine of insatiable blood. They need a machine of constant blood. And so it's getting really kind of freaky now because um, so, that, so now, uh, how many know sin always evolves? Righteousness stays the same. So there's this new thing now called um, spiritual abortion. It's popping up on billboards. It's popping up in major magazines. I don't want to. There's one magazine that starts with a C, uh, and on their website, it's a, this is a. If I said it, everybody here would know the magazine. Okay, I just don't want to say it for certain reasons. And right on their website, even now, they're, they're teaching the young girls how to do spiritual abortions. And part of the spiritual abortion is you have to uh, do this satanic ritual over yourself. It's getting very deep. 
Um, there's another one that is a new uptick um, where, um, I have to say these things, where you, you, um, you use, the woman uses her menstrual blood um, and smears it on herself. She wears it throughout the day, puts it in bottles. It's, it's getting really weird. And you're going to see all of this is going to be centered more and more around blood. Um, it's just a very mysterious thing that God did um, um, because how many you know, the Bible makes it clear that everything about our inheritance and our redemption has to do with blood. Blood. Blood is so powerful that when Abel got killed, the Bible says that his blood cried out from the ground. <laughs> That's how much life is in the blood. It speaks. See, and so the, the, the body of Christ is stuck in church services and know nothing about the deep things. The Holy Spirit wants to take us into the what? Deep things of God. Okay. And so you can't be deep playing games. So you got to get familiar with all of this type of stuff, you know. Now let me tell you something. I don't study witchcraft. I don't need to. Right. Witchcraft has to study us. Right. Uh, the failure always has to study the success. Right. Uh, oh man, but the success does not study the failure. I don't need to study darkness. I just need to come in with a flashlight. Oh, I see you, little roach. Goodbye. Oh, matter of fact, I think I'm going to stump on you just like Jesus did. So to get all this out of you need to be familiar with the Holy Ghost, not darkness. <clears throat> it's funny about darkness. They always, watch this. See, it's a reason why Jesus said the water that I give, he said, when you drink this water, you won't ask for another one. But when you drink dark water, uh, I need, uh, uh, that didn't taste good. You know, I did the palm reading. That didn't taste good. Let me try tarot cards. Uh, that didn't taste good. Let me burn some sage. Well, that won't taste right. See, the dark water always leaves you thirsty. Always keeps you looking. Let me try astral projection. Yeah, well, kind of tired of that now. Let me, let me just try root. Let me try voodoo. And let me try spirit cooking. And, and let me try in and, and, and the darkness. And the devil keeps them people in witchcraft chasing. Chasing false water. And that's a word to all of the witches. The sons of God, we only got one water. And, and, and when you taste that, there's no need to try anything else. Understand what I'm saying? So y'all got all these spirit gods. There's no such thing as a spirit God. That's not true. A spirit God is not a spirit God. A spirit God is a demonic spirit that masks himself as a spirit God to keep you running around the forest of darkness That's the spirit God. He guides you in circles. That's why you keep trying stuff, witches. That's why you keep trying stuff. We have the ultimate spirit God. He's the Holy Ghost. But unfortunately, the church has taught you that the Holy Ghost was for shouting. The Bible says the Holy Ghost will lead you and guide you in all truth. So the, Ghost said the, the Bible says the Holy Ghost will bring all things to your remembrance. The whole, Bible says the Holy Ghost will show you the future. Okay? The Bible says the Holy Ghost will take you into the Deep things of God. The Bible says the Holy Ghost gives you a supernatural language that can't none of y'all fools understand. <laughs> so you got to get familiar with all of this stuff because if the church right now, the church is living in sin, having church services. The real church will invoke the blood of Jesus Christ. And it don't matter if a witch drinks blood from sunup to sundown for the next 30 years. If I just apply the blood to you with my mind, man, come on. Y'all got to have formulas. You got to have incantations. You got to pull trees out the forest and a bunny rabbit ear and a vegetable and sage. And you got to put it in a pot and you got to work all of this type of stuff. We just show up and say something. That's real power. You just show up and say. In the name of the ultimate king of kings. So let it be written. So let it be. It's my favorite scene in the Ten Commandments, by the way. So let it be written. So let it be done. The kids are like, what is he talking about? You got to watch the old, the old, never mind. The original old, never mind. Okay, so the witches, and, and they're coming for the church. Y'all see them on social media? They talking about us like we ain't nothing. Yeah, y'all ran into the wrong, uh, y'all didn't run into the lines, y'all ran into cats. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. No witch, 
Bishop Oedipo said, I can't remember the country he went and visited. He said, and he said he had to stay in a hotel. He said the top witch, oh, it's a, it's a female called the Queen of Sheba over, over in Africa. Hmm? Top female witch called the Queen of Sheba. When she found out that Oedipo was coming to stay at the hotel, her and her whole entourage went back home. See, see, that's real power. 500 riches to come in here. Welcome, have a seat. You want some donuts? But when I show up, y'all got a problem on your hand. I've been gone for a minute, so we're about to be done in a minute. John, y'all know who John Paul Jackson is? Oh, I got to come back down for this story. You know, the story gets good when I come down. John Paul Jackson, we call him the godfather of dream interpretation. Okay? He had been having dreams since five. He taught us a lot about dreams from a scriptural point of view, of course. And um, I think he has a website called streamsministries.com. Yeah. Um, everything about dream interpretation, biblical dream interpretation. Never Google a dream. It will be off. God gives the dream, therefore he gives the interpretation. Okay. <clears throat> and so, so they, in this particular city, they were having a, I can't remember what it was called, but it was like it was an enlightenment conference. And, but everybody that, he said, we're not talking about like some little small room. He said, this was a conference center. He said, and there were hundreds of tables there. And he said, every single last person there, you're invited because you're into some form of the occult or witchcraft. You got books, you got, you know, I'm sure they got crystals, they got trees that sing. They got all type of stuff, you know, crickets that fly, you know, all of that crazy stuff you see in witchcraft, you know, because that's, that's how much it takes to get a little bit of power. Okay, but let me show you what real power is. So the Holy Spirit told him, go and set up a table at the same conference. Uh, I don't know if I want to do that. No, set up a table. So he went, paid the fee, set up a table. And so he said, it was very interesting. He said, all of these thousands of people came out. And he said, they're just going from table to table. He was able to minister to a few people, talk about dream interpretation, what his books were about and his material. And he said, you know, he said, uh, but uh, he said, Sometimes what he would do is he would just walk away from his table and just go kind of look at other tables, you know, to see uh, what the new inventions of the devil were, you know, and, oh, that's interesting. Okay, you got Bugs Bunny wearing a witch hat on a broom. Okay, all right, he kept going, kept on going. Wonderful. He said at the end of, the, at the end of this conference, he told the lady, he said, hey, thank you for allowing me to come. He, he said, I'd like to come back next time. She said, no, that will not be allowed. He said, why? She said, the other people don't want you to come back. She said, I didn't even, he said, I didn't even say nothing to them. She said, you didn't have to. She said, they said that when you came to their tables, their power shut off. <laughs> and they thought you were doing it on purpose so that you could get all the money. Wow. Some of y'all have shut things down yes. and didn't even know you shut it down. Because yeah. real power just makes stuff happen without no... Yeah. Y'all remember the woman that came up behind Jesus and said, the moment I touch him, Jesus was minding his own business. He was headed to Chick-fil-A for a new sandwich and a milkshake. And that woman walked behind him and touched the hem of his garment. And Jesus said, who did that? Thank you. He said, I felt something leave me. But, but who did that? See, that's real power. Real power responds to the sons of God. Oh, without Jesus knowing it. Who did that? You know, it's a lot of principles in Scripture. Someone said something about Jesus and his disciples and the unified type of situation that they had. Y'all remember when Jesus said, one of y'all will betray me? You notice that Peter didn't say, is it John? You notice John didn't say, is it James? You know, James didn't say, surely it's Thomas, because he don't never believe nothing. <laughs> it's, it's got to be Thomas. You know, does every single last one of them say, is it me? It also shows you how darkness can mask, because none of the disciples knew that Judas was off. Because if they knew he was off, they would have said, surely it's the guy we sensed was off. Three years, that man is under the direction of Satan, negotiating the sale of the Son of God, stealing the money. And no one knew. There are some things God will keep hitting from you for a reason. Like I always say, just because I didn't say nothing, doesn't mean I didn't see nothing. 
Yo, like, pastor is blind. No, no, I'm not blind. And now there are times when God will blind me. Hey, and with uh, the situation with the young lady that had been dedicated to witchcraft and came in our home, that was a situation where the Lord blinded me. He needed me to go blind, to go to a certain point with that girl. If he had opened up my eyes, then I would have pulled back. So y'all saw some things, but he didn't let me see it because the assignment was for me, not for you. Oh, God. <clears throat> All right, let's go ahead and close this down. That was a lot. Luke 646, so why do you keep calling me Lord when you don't do what I say? But everybody here next year is going to do everything that Jesus says. Yeah. I will show you what it's like when someone comes to me, listens to my teaching, and then follows it. It's like, this is a key. It's like a person building a house who digs deep and lays the foundation on solid rock. When the flood riders rise and break against that house, it stands firm because it's well built. Notice, when the flood comes, it does nothing to that house because it's a doer of the word. But anyone who hears and doesn't obey is like a person who builds a house right on the ground without a foundation. When the floods sweep down against that house, it will collapse into a heap of ruins. There are going to be some people that the destruction will not be because God does not answer prayer. It will be because you don't obey the word. See, negative things, negative things are intelligent. Everything has an intelligence built into it. If no one ever told you, you would never think that blood speaks. If no one ever told you, if Jesus never told you, you wouldn't know that ro rocks, most people don't know this, cement and rocks record everything. They are recording devices. They're like, that's just a rock. It's a recording device. Jesus said, there's an intelligence in stones that if all of you all stop praising me, they'll start singing. You can't even see the intelligence, you can see the rock. You, and let me tell you something. I was listening to a testimony of another man. He said, Jesus appeared. He said, everything came alive. Everything. He said, everything came alive. He said, the air was singing. He said, the trees turned into something else. He said, everything that you think is dead is actually living. Okay. Hallelujah. So it says, when the floods come in against that house, it'll collapse. So everyone needs to be building a good house next year. Now, skip next year, now. Okay. <laughs> Never mind. All right, last few. I just decided to tack this on because we're talking about acceptably, bringing certain things. No, I, I realize most people have never even read just a few scriptures about being in the house of God. See, let me say something. The Bible says where two or three are gathered together, there I am in the midst. Now, there's a grace for people that can't be here. Whether it be that they're local, it can't be. Some people in America, y'all, is just they are just flat out lazy. And people get offended at that. And it's okay for you to get offended because maybe your offense might run you into a wall and you get your act together. I just told someone yesterday, I said, what does it look like for the person that is here every time and you live down the street and that you're never here? Because you'd rather wash it at, you'd rather watch it at home with a blanket on, drinking some coffee in front of a screen. But would your grandmother accept that at Thanksgiving? No grandmother wants her children to stay at home when she's cooking a meal. No grandmother is satisfied where she has six kids and four of them come to the meal and the other ones come and just watch it by video conference. One of the things you don't know, see, people are so used to coming to the house of God for themselves, they don't really know what God desires. And one of the things about God being a good father is that he loves for his children to come together. That is something that touches his heart. When I go overseas, that's something I had to get used to. It's like, why does man always ask him? If me? My wife would tell me. She said, it's because the man loves his sons and he just wants to be around them sometimes. I was like, oh, wow. And so, you know, particularly if you haven't seen someone for a while. And so let me just show you a couple of scriptures with that. It'll only take five minutes. I said that last time, but it took more. But this time it will only take five minutes because this is not the time to pull away and neglect meeting together as some have formed the habit of doing. I'm going to read that again. This is not the time to pull away and neglect meeting together as some have formed the habit of doing. It's a bad habit. 
In fact, we should come together even more frequently, eager to encourage and urge each other onward as we anticipate that day dawning. He said, y'all disengaging, you should be engaging more. Leviticus 17, if any native Israelite sacrifices a bull or a lamb or a goat anywhere inside or outside the camp, <clears throat> instead of bringing it to the entrance of the tabernacle to present it as an offering to the Lord, that person will be as guilty as a murderer. Such a person has shed blood and will be cut off from the community. The purpose of this rule is to stop the Israelites from sacrificing animals in the open fields. It will ensure that they bring their sacrifices to the priests at the entrance of the tabernacle. That was a more stricter rule. God was always trying to get them to come together. Leviticus 19.30, keep my Sabbath days of rest. Keep my Sabbath days of rest and show reverence toward my sanctuary. I am the Lord. See, when you don't give reverence to something, you can easily dismiss it. Leviticus 23, 8, for seven days you must present special gifts to the Lord. On the seventh day, the people must again stop all of their ordinary work to observe an official day for holy assembly. Key word is assembly. Leviticus 23, 24, give the following instructions to the people of Israel. On the first day of the appointed month in early autumn, you are to observe a day of complete rest. It will be an official day for holy assembly, a day commemorated with loud blasts of, of a trumpet. You must do no ordinary work on that day. Instead, you are to present special gifts to the Lord. Luke 4.16, when he came to the village of Nazareth, his boyhood home, this is Jesus, he went as what? As what? Usual. As what? Usual. It's quiet in this Presbyterian church. When Jesus came to the village of Nazareth, his boyhood home, he went as usual to the synagogue on the Sabbath and stood up to read scriptures. Acts 13, 14, Paul and Barnabas traveled inland to Antioch of Pisidia. On the Sabbath day, they went to the synagogue for the services, even though they were out of town. Acts 17, 2, as Paul's custom, he went to the synagogue service and for three Sabbaths in a row, he, visit, he used the scriptures to reason with the people. Y'all got that? I've done enough. This is how you serve God acceptably. You are not allowed in the kingdom to do what you like. You are only allowed to do what is right. But most people are not even seeking God about what is right. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his way of being right. And what you keep praying about will be given to you. Because God always gives things to people that are right. Always remember this. Just because you did everything doesn't mean that that's all to do. Amen. Amen. Always remember that. I did everything I know. Yeah, but there might be more. But if you switch over to an attitude, well, I did everything. I did everything. I did everything. No, you didn't. <laughs> people will do the wrong thing for 10 years. Do the right thing for a few days. And, and because it didn't show up overnight, you know, there's a reason God knows what he's doing. If you were a failure, you would have been a failure. You're still afloat. <clears throat> I'll end by saying this, just as a warning to everybody. So this is next week. You're going to appreciate that one. 30th, we're at both services that weekend. You might, you play too much. I can't remember the name of the guy, but I just watched a video about a man that Jesus appeared to him, took him into the future and showed him what we call the rapture of the church. Any of you that are very, very new to the faith, I might lose you for a moment. But the Bible makes it clear about God snatching people off the planet right before the worst part happens. <clears throat> people have argued about whether it's seven years, three and a year, I don't know, okay? But I'll let, let, leave that to the deep people. But he said it was the most, he said, he said, he said Jesus appeared to him and said, let's go. I'm taking you to the future. I want you to see something. And I like the people. You know what? You know what is two minutes. You know what's really cool about YouTube and social media and TikTok and Instagram and, and poltergeist and all of the new ones that's coming out and all that type of stuff. <laughs> they just keep adding stuff. I'm like, I'm done with the four. I'm not I'm not getting ready to add no new stuff to my plate. You know what's very interesting is Oh man, they're gonna be mad at me, but that's okay. What's very interesting is social media has allowed to buy, has allowed regular people who love Jesus to bypass the preacher. 
to bypass the typical of prophet. It's allowed them to bypass guys like me and you. Now, me and you, you know, we legit and everything. But social media has allowed Jesus to get his message out without having to rely on the ones that he called. And so there are some very, very powerful voices on social media. These are not your typical. It's a reason why they have been prophesying that just in, that the last day move will be a nameless, faceless generation. It would no longer be about big name preachers. It'll be about small people who had a big mind like Jesus, who really loved him and wanted to get people saved. And I want to be used by God also. Because trust me, wait till you see this blueprint. We about to, ooh, Jesus. Let me get back to the point. But the man said the vision started. So I'll, I'll, you could tell that this happened to this man because he's not some deep. And he said the thing started, he said, right after the rapture had happened. He said everything was on fire. He said buildings, cars, everything was on fire. He said, because so many cars and airplanes and trains had crashed. And he said the whole planet was in straight mayhem and it was looting everywhere, killing. He said it was just crazy. He said, he said, but the Lord said, I want to show you the Christians. He said what was appalling was the number of Christians that got left behind. He said it was deep. He said as half the Christians, he said they were, of course, just sobbing uncontrollably, I cannot believe that I got left behind. He said, well, as deep as the other Christians, he said they were cussing God out. How dare you take your mama and you take me? You know I went to church. Wonderful. So does Satan. He ain't up here. It, it was unbelievable. He said what was even deeper, he said, is when the Lord showed him the Antichrist. The Antichrist will be a Middle Eastern man. It's not going to be somebody out of America. No, it started in the Middle East, and it's going to end in the Middle East. Like I always joke and say, when Jesus comes back, he is not coming through Kentucky or California. <laughs> Says he is going to drop down in Israel. Period. Okay. So he said, but what was very interesting is he said when this happened, because the scripture says how when this happens, it says the world leaders <clears throat> will give their authority to the Antichrist in a quick moment. He said he saw it. He said they were having a meeting in Europe, even though it was a Middle Eastern man. He said all of the world leaders, the Middle Eastern man stood up and said, I have an answer for all of this. And he said the reason why they gave their power to him is because they were all horrified about what had just happened. He said, you need to pay attention to the fact that all of this alien uptick in the news media. He said, because the news media was told to flip it and say that aliens had come and taken the Christians. He said, what was very interesting is the Antichrist figure flipped it. He said, the Christians were taken not because they were righteous, but because they were rebellious. Because the Antichrist is a Muslim man. If you actually study the Quran and you can study the Antichrist, same individual. Our Antichrist is their savior. I believe it's pronounced the Mujahideen. Yeah. Um, that is their, so what the Bible says is our Antichrist, they say that it is their savior. And the reason why they see him as a savior, because the Antichrist destroys all of the Christians. See what I'm saying? He said it was unbelievable. He said, how, how many of y'all know that when COVID came through, it was amazing how they adjusted things so fast around the world. Hey, I was just, that was just crazy. I was like, this is not a test right here, boy. Yep. He said he saw that thing, and he said how they put that chip in your forehead and your hand. Now, now remember, how many of y'all know the Bible says that this is going to happen? How many know the Bible makes it clear that the Antichrist is going to show up and put everybody in this perverted system and put a chip in their forehead and put a chip in their hand? So how many know the Bible makes that clear? But what did the Bible also say? None of the wicked will understand. That's why they'll do it. Because they don't understand what the Bible says about the chip. None of them will understand. And even if they did, they'll still do it anyway because they're not saved. I'll, I'll leave you with this. I never heard this before. You know the Bible calls us the light of the world and the salt of the... He had the salt of the earth. Salt of the earth. He said, what, he said, I was only able to see this in a vision. He said, we don't understand the peace in the midst of the mayhem that even the sinners experience because they're actually living off of our peace. He said, you don't know what that feels like, he said, until every Christian is snatched off the planet at the same time. And the only people here are the wicked. And he said, and that salt and that light is lifted. 
And he said, the reason why everybody becomes a robot, they're trying to like, what is this that left me? It was the peace that they had, even though they weren't with the Prince of Peace. They had a peace because the salt was here. That's why the Bible says you're the salt of the earth. You're the light of the world. Preservative. The preservative leaves. Now everything becomes rotten. And they're like, wait a minute. When it happens, they're like, the people left, but something left me when they left. Oh, Jesus. Now I'm Christ saying, uh, my turn. And, and he said in the vision, the reason why they accepted what the Antichrist said is because when he spoke, the Bible says he would give a false peace. It says that when he spoke, it made everybody feel what they kind of felt before the Christians left. That's why they accept him. He has a false peace. False peace is similar to true peace, but it's false. Y'all got me? It's the greatest time. If you know, I'm not wicked, so I understand. And so you have to brace yourself. Next year is going to be a trip. It's going to be a few against all of them. And I know the Lord has prepared myself and all of you for this moment. We will not be able to save some of the wicked being weak. They got to see a dog barking bigger than the black dog. You understand what I'm saying? I ain't talking about race, I'm talking about darkness. You know what I'm saying? Right now, witches bark a lot. They're like coyotes, hyenas, and wolves. I mean, you go out there, have you ever been in the woods? What do you hear? Ah! One of them starts, ah! ah! you like, shut up, man, I'm trying to, trying to sleep. You ever seen hyenas? I can't stand hyenas. That, ooh, hyenas are just a, ooh, them things, them things are definitely like demonic spirits. They just, <clears throat> excuse me, hyenas, wolves, coyotes, all of those things. And, and then they, they make the most noise in the night, you know. And so, but the Lord's going to raise up a few lions. And, and you ever see a group of hyenas or coyotes attack a lion? Real careful. Okay. You ever seen a lion be careful when he attacks somebody? No, he doesn't care if he just stays hidden. I don't want them to see me. Get ready. <laughs> Get ready. Got you. Now he on back of the zebra. I got you behind. I got me a mule for the next three days. But it's very interesting to watch coyotes if they think a lion is weak. They keep circling them. And, and they try to nip at them, and they real care. It's an amazing thing to see a lion defend himself from about 15, 30 coyotes, or hyenas in particular. And then you ever seen videos where the second lion comes, then it's over right there. So these are the days of unity. It's a reason why the Lord is putting other pastors and putting us in league. It's a, it's a, it's a spiritual link around the world. It's a spiritual link. The devil knows attacking this church is like attacking the other one. He didn't know that in the spirit. And so, so I'll share that. I'll share that later next time. Okay, so I'm just encouraging you, you know, to be here. This place is getting ready to experience a serious uptick in regards to things. Don't be surprised if in a year we have in church services every evening. I'm not saying you have to be at all of them. I'm just saying that we might have to, and we might have to be very dedicated in regards to discipline. Like, okay, this group, are y'all free to come on Friday nights? Yeah, okay, y'all come on Friday nights then, you know. And uh, but we're gonna see, you know, where this goes. I'm trying to keep something. So, all right, because I don't want to mess up. Y'all good? Yeah. Hallelujah! 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 No one will be destroyed next year. I said, no one will be destroyed next year. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God, hallelujah. Let's go ahead and stand. Whew. I'm, uh, I'm going to let you actually run the baptism part. So, hallelujah. Matter of fact, for you all that are getting baptized, just run down here right quick. Just run down here. We're just going to pray over the baptism and then send them out into the other sanctuary to be baptized. Hallelujah. And then you're... Thank you, Jesus. Just come right down here. <laughs> I think we had nine. Oh, no, y'all can face me. Y'all can face me. Hallelujah. 
Oh, there's one more. Oh, that's okay. What I pray over one ends up being overall. So here's our candidates of baptism. They're going to take you all over to uh, another room. Don't worry, the water is warm. It's not cold. So let's just stretch our hands and pray over them. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for those that are being baptized on today. Thank you, O oh Lord God, for the decision that they have made. And I thank you that they are sealing it on this morning, O oh Father. Thank you, O oh Lord God, that as they are baptized, it will represent fully, O oh Lord God, what it means to be one with Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord God, for blessing their life, increasing them, refreshing them, filling them with the knowledge of your will. Thank you, O oh Father God, for doing this. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen, amen, amen. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. You all can go ahead and follow on this side, and they'll lead them out, and then I'll dismiss in a minute. And so if your family, they uh, will be able to go. Eric, let me tell you something right quick. Hallelujah. Lift your hands towards heaven. Father, we thank you. We bless and honor you. Go ahead and lift your voice and give him thanks for a moment. Bless and praise his holy and majestic name. Father, we magnify you. Give us grace, O Lord God. Come on, lift up your voice. Give us grace, O Lord God, to live right. Give us grace to do what is acceptable. Give us grace, O Lord God, to do what is right. Give us grace and strength to love you, to serve you, to support your work, O Lord God, in the kingdom of God. Bless and honor you, O Father. And thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, O Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your holy name, O Lord God. Hallelujah, O oh Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. If you're here in person or online, I'm just going to lead you in a prayer right quick. Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, if you will accept what Jesus did for you on the cross, say it in the form of a prayer that he would forgive you of all of your sins, turn you into a new person, and write your name in the book of life. 1 John 1, 9 says, if you confess your sins, God will for be faithful and forgive you of all of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. All of it, not some of it, all of it. Thank you, Lord God. If your sin is too big, it means Jesus is too small. Remember that. In Ephesians 2, 8, 9, it says, salvation is not something you can work for. It says it's a gift that can only be received free. And so I'm just gonna lead everyone in a prayer I know there are people that are listening online that need to get into this. This prayer will save your soul. This prayer will make you a member of heaven. This prayer will cause your sins to be forgiven and wiped away. And this prayer will rededicate you to Jesus if you were once serving the Lord before. 
So we're going to repeat it together so that if it's your first time, you won't feel isolated. But just remember, the Bible says if you're ashamed of Jesus, he'll be ashamed to let you in heaven. So never be ashamed of who you are in Christ. Repeat this prayer after me. Say, Father, I receive Jesus Christ as the sacrifice for my sins and my eternal life. I receive forgiveness because of his shed blood. I thank you for forgiving me, cleansing me, and making me whole. I receive Jesus as my Lord, my Savior, and my King. I thank you that according to your word and this prayer and my faith in you, that I am forgiven, I am cleansed, I am made new, I'm a new person, and I'm a member of heaven. Thank you for saving me, protecting me, redeeming me. Thank you for prospering me, healing me, and giving me peace. I receive this, and thank you for it. In Jesus' name. Amen, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, O oh Lord God. Father, we thank you. We praise you and we bless you and we magnify you. And thank you, O oh Lord God, for this day. Thank you for peace and safety. Let the spirit, O oh Lord God, of the kingdom of God be with us in all that we do, in all that we say. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Someone grab Jared for me for a moment. He needs to just make an announcement. Jared, oh, never mind. <laughs> he come to the wall like an angel. <clears throat> just give me one second. Um, so I'm just going to start this. I'm going to make the same announcement over the three weeks. He's going to make an announcement. We have pretty much transitioned everything over that needs to be transitioned. There's one more final transition that we'll let you know about. And so uh, um, um, When we were at, sitting at Bishop Oyedipo's desk in his office, he said, people always ask me what I do. He said, I pray. He said, I read. You know, he said, I pray. He said, I study, I meditate, and I think. And I knew that I was going to be called to that place to be able to just be able to sit. It takes, it takes a minute to, to grab what I'm supposed to do. You know what I mean? Very important for you to pray for me. I understand why our generals, not new guys, generals will say, I'd rather have you pray for me than for an hour than give me $100,000. I understand why they say that now. Um, and so, you know, our website that they're putting on the screen is called info at lionheartchurch.org. Um, 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 uh, I want you to send us an email, um, and I want you to put why you sent it. Um, right now, we need people... Uh, uh, we need people for the camera department. We need people, and this works even for online people. Um, we need people that are video editors. Um, we need to be able to get this message out a particular way. Um, we need video editors. And we're not talking about wannabes. I'm talking about this is, you know, just... Now, now if you always had a heart for it, then they will teach it to you. We're not talking about, we're not talking about, huh, you know what? I've been riding a skateboard for the last 30 years. I might as well go ahead and try this, something new. No, we didn't talk about those people. And, and, and be honest with yourself, we need faithful people. So we need camera operators, church, children, church ushers. And, but we need, um, what, is that, what is that term? Um, IT? Yeah, we need technical IT people. Um, and uh, um, and I need, we need more people for social media. What I mean by that is I just simply, let me tell you something, y'all. I was gone for a week, a week. Explain to me why I come back and there's 700 people ready to take the spiritual growth class in a week. See, I, we, the team we have can't handle it. So at this point, let me tell you something. At this point, we're only getting the ones where we reach out to them and tell them to reach out to us. We don't even go on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok and see the messages that are sitting there. We don't even touch them. 
we don't, my wife will go on there. She's like, did you know? No, but I don't know because I'm not looking at this. It's insane. So remember I told you that when time would come, no building would hold us and we would never be able to handle the numbers. All we can do is the best that we can. I have to have a great amount of wisdom. When it comes to the public, I'm going to tell them, you have a personal responsibility. I provide it free. If you want to know it, then you got to get it. Be on the stream on Saturdays. Eventually, that'll be Sundays, too. Be on the stream so that you can be in the services and learn the systematic way in which I'm preaching. We will be giving more attention, though, to the people who become online members and online partners. I need to raise up people that can mentor them, small groups online. You know, so I need to be able to say, hey, I need to, how many people can you handle? Give me 15. And they maybe say to her, how many can you handle? Um, I got a big family, give me 10. <laughs> you got to be honest with yourself. You got to be able to go to somebody else, give me 30. You got to go to somebody else. You know what, you can give me two groups of 30. You understand what I'm saying? And so this is how they did it in the book of Acts. Otherwise, we will lose masses amount of people. They might get saved, but they might go back out. They might get saved, but they won't grow. They might get saved, but they won't become ministers of the gospel. And so if you, if you want to be a part of that, let me say this. You do have to be um, a, a member of the church. If you're newer and you, you know, that's no problem. You just wait until you're ready. Don't always just jump into something. Just wait, ask questions, make sure that you're settled. But what, what, I, what I'm raising up is too big for me to comprehend. And the Holy Spirit won't, he won't show me because I know he, it's because I can't handle it. It's just big. And all you can do is start learning how to manage it. So I need to be able to give you people and say, okay, these are the 20 people, and you are in charge of making sure they understand salvation, making them, do they need baptism of the Holy Spirit, praying in tongues, do, do they know how to give on the platform, do they have questions about their marriage, do they need the spiritual growth class, do they need this, do they need that. You are in charge of keeping them informed. You understand what I'm saying? So that we don't lose these people. The Lord is trying to do something very, very big. It's the spirit of the ark. He's trying to get people to a place of safety. And very few ministries will, very, most are not qualified to do that. They, they, ministries have to be a place of safety in these last days. And people that connect to it, they'll, they'll connect to the grace that's on that place, and that grace will cover their household. Okay? And so like I said, one was allowed to break through when I was in, in Nigeria, okay? at our house. He was allowed to break right through the forest field. Okay? Came in the room, held me by the neck. And... Um, and so, uh, but it was allowed because while he was doing it, the Holy Spirit was telling me why he allowed him to do it. He said, this is the reason why he's here. I was like, oh, wow. He said, yeah, so make sure you take that 21-day fast serious. Okay, I'll tell you the rest about that later. Okay, so send an email. I mean, if you're IT, if you, I, we need people to comb through our social media and engage with people. Just engage with people. Again, if you watch cartoons all day, this is not a new idea for you. You know what I'm saying? You have to already be somebody that's kind of in the social media, knows our flows. We need you to go on our profiles and comb through this stuff and begin to sift through, okay, okay, well, you got you want revelation on how goldfish mate. Well, we don't need to call you about nothing, you know. And, and okay, this couple, they're in serious trouble. I, I went and looked at one. I'm supposed to. Oh, that's right. They, they got the good with the I looked at one, just one. I went on TikTok. And as I look at this thing, it's just all red across. It means it's full. I just read one. One. Sir. He said, uh, from a child I was mentored to be a, um, what is it when you are a boy? No, 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 no. Boy, you become a girl. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, hey. He told me, he said, from boy, he said, I've been mentored to be a transvestite. He said, the men that did this to me, he said, they pimped me out on the street. He said, I was a male prostitute, male trans transvestite prostitute. Yeah. That's just one. <sighs> I have to be careful about my anger. Mm. I have to be very careful. You're going to see some stuff you got to, you can't. Remember what, remember what the disciples did to Jesus? They got so angry. They said, Lord, these people disrespect you. Should we call down fire and kill them? He said, careful, you don't know what spirit you are of. He said, I didn't come to destroy people. I came to save. Now, one day I will destroy them, but now is not the time. And he was reaching out. He said, man, I gave my life to Christ. He said, but now that I gave my life to Christ, he said, I can't figure out why the devil is trying to kill me now. 
it's, it's because it's you left him. He need to kill you before the witness kicks in. You understand what I'm saying? That's just one. Now, do you see how I'm Now, that one, I told him, I said, here's my phone number. I need you to call me personally so I give you some instructions. But see, these people, they listen to us and they feel the weight. They can, you, 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 when you listen to this ministry, the, there's a presence about it unless you know, oh, this, you, you can't handle presence fake. Can't have this fake. You know what I'm saying? So we need people to help us with that. Where we got to give you, and you pull these people's names, and doing it the old school way. This is this person's name. Let me reach out to them, see if they respond back. We got a spiritual growth class, you know, and I'm going to have to pray about how to do systematic classes every week. Classes for inner healing and deliverance. Classes for praying in tongues. Spiritual growth. People who, you understand what I'm saying? Marriage classes. It's unbelievable. So whether it's you want to be a part of the social media, whether you want to be an editor, so the editor is the sermons that y'all see the clips, where you would be one of the ones editing those clips. We'll give you the file, and then you edit it so they can be formatted to put up on social media or on all the other platform. If you're an editor, you're interested in that, or you want to be a part of the camera department, or just children's church ushers, all of those things. Or if you're an IT person, and we could be missing some, I'm going to announce it every week. You know, send an email to info at Lionheart Church, okay? And um, and I don't send an email and it just says, hey, you know, I'm down. <laughs> no, we need to know what you can help us with. You know what I'm saying? You know what we are blown away at? We are. Guess what we have to do? We, we realize we have to go to a different format. We will send people instructions on how to be a part of the social media, uh, the spiritual growth class. They don't obey the instructions. They do everything wrong. So we have to switch over to a format, this mass, we will send you if you want to be a part here, but you won't be able to submit the form unless you fill in all of the required fields. See that? So we're making adjustments, making adjustments, okay? You have to catch the fish, but then you got to clean the fish. And when you clean the fish, you got to have a process to keep the fish. You understand what I'm saying? And so, and, and be led with that. Don't feel bad if, oh, oh, no, you have another department. You might be an usher. You might be part of the security. You might be a part of the music department. Everybody is going to find their place. And then, of course, we're going to be raising up ministers here. Some people, let me say something. You never have to, you, it was never designed for you to leave your home church to fulfill the will of God. Okay? So you're going to have people that, oh, well, unless the Lord calls you to a place. You have people the Lord will call them to a place, and that happens. You know, but, but it's supposed to be an extension. An extension. One of the things that we're blown away, all of the people that left OU, the Pope was still with them. Ministry-wise, connection-wise. Now, there are times when the Lord will send you to another church. We're not talking about that. Y'all understand what I'm saying? So help us with that. These next three meetings are for the purpose of setting the stage. Because when January 1st strikes, you don't understand why it's going to strike. Prepare yourself for this 21-day fast. It's going to start on the 8th, not on the 1st. I know if I start on the 1st, you're not going to do it. Okay, because I'm not. <laughs> it's got to be on the 8th, the 8th through the 28th. We're going to do it in tandem with Winner's Chapel around the world, Nigeria, and Redeemed Church of God. Get y'all more familiar with them too, big boys. And, but this, this fast is for the purpose of breaking something. I will share it with you on the 30th, the two things that the Lord showed me, what was against us this year and what has been created against us forever. And that 21-day fast is for the purpose of breaking it over this ministry as well as of breaking it over your household. Remember something. I'm not saying other ministries are not strong and everything. There are some that are simply at the top of their game. Okay, Lionheart Church, because of who we're connected to and our own weight, these ministries are the greatest threat to hell right now, and they're trying to do everything they can to break it. Everything. But how many of you know that's not going to happen? We're going to break them. Amen. Hallelujah. We'll do this last one, and then we'll let you out. Thank you for being patient. You can come over here. So just real quick. Um, Pastor O has talked about us changing over our church management and giving systems. So what I need everybody to do, if you're currently in Realm, you have an account in Realm, over the next week or two, I'm going to be sending out a new login created um, email. Can, can you put that? Yeah, so this is the email that you're going to get. It is not spam. I need everyone to go onto this email and click that activate login and create a username and password for the new system. Um, for everyone who is currently giving in Realm, go to the website on the giving tab. There's a new way to give. So we're, we're leaving Realm completely. So I need you to go. I know some people may have, have Realm saved in their phone so they can give easily, quickly. 
do me a favor, go to the website, click the giving tab, and give through the new push pay system. Um, if you currently have a reoccurring gift set up, I need you to change your reoccurring gift, end it in realm, and, and set it up in push pay. Um, but again, please go, when you get this email, go to, click the activate, activate login and create your username and password in push pay. And we're going to announce this every week because you all that are familiar with RAM know exactly what we're talking about. The new people, you can just go to the website and see, look for the giving tab. It's very simple. We're going to announce it every week, and we might have to even do something at close off the online feed and demonstrate it right from the screen also. Ah, that's okay. He said he'll do a video and put it on the website. Some of you will be fine, but as always, some, some, some are going to be like, I don't know how this works. And... I didn't even know we were on RAM. I was just giving. <laughs> so I never did like that name because when we send you an email like, what is RAM? This sounds like some foolishness to me, you know. And so a uh, push pace. And we had to switch over to that system. RAM was good for where we were, but it just can't handle where we're going. And so put those things into practice. How many know when everything is new? How many know when you get a download on your phone, they send out other downloads to fix the bugs? You know, but these are both very powerful. We've never had one issue on the old giving platform for 12 years, and the new one is even stronger than that. So you don't have to worry about your information or anything like that. Once again, if you're a first-time visitor, um, I'm going to actually ask, first-time visitor or you have not met my wife and I, go ahead and step out into the aisle right now, walk towards the back. They're going to take you to the conference room so my wife and I can just come and meet with you personally. And just step out. Let's give our first-time visitors a hand, and second time, a third time. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, so funny when they come when I'm not here. They're like, that preacher was the bomb. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. It was Brother Devon. That was great. Hallelujah. Seemed like it was one. I, I just released the first time visitors, right? Why does it seem, huh? Oh, oh yeah. So you're welcome to go down for um, for the. I thought I had already released the families for the baptism. When you're going to always just ask them where the baptism sanctuary is. Um, I'm sure they're already um, rolling with that. So I'm a little. Oh, Eric, you. Oh, cool. If you're here for baptism, go there. His hand is lifted. You can follow that for those that are being baptized, and then we'll go from there. Thank you for being patient with us today. Hallelujah. Still seems like it's something that I'm missing. Maybe I'm not. It's going to have to be missed. Hallelujah. Y'all happy about the future? Hey, no matter where you are, God is going to bring you up higher. Let's lift our hands. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you. We praise you. May the grace of God go with us throughout the remaining of this day, O oh Lord God, and keep us in perfect peace. We thank you for what we have experienced, what you are doing in our midst. Thank you, Lord God, for doing this and allowing us to be a part of it. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Give someone a high five, a hug. Tell them to have a blessed day, and we'll see you next week.